Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. So today, I just want to talk about heroes once again. And I'm going to talk about heroes in a literary sense. That is to say, how to put a hero down on a page. But of course, you can probably apply this to your life if you wish to do that as well. And once again, the reason why I started to think about the things I'm going to talk about today in particular was because I've started to go on various live streams to talk about my upcoming graphic novel. And just as an aside, the link is in the description for the Indiegogo pre-launch page for my graphic novel, and if you sign up there, you will be informed when the project goes live, and if you sign up and then later order the book, you will also receive a free pinup poster with your order. Now, we started to nail down dates. I think possibly we're going to launch at the end of November, early December 2020, which means you have less than a month left to sign up if you wish to receive this pinup poster. And this is the only place you will receive this pinup poster. It will not be part of a tier. If you sign up, that's the only place you can get this particular pinup poster. There will be different ones in the campaign. So again, the link is in the description to sign up. But as I said, I've been going on different live streams and talking to people about what I usually discuss, which is the idea of hero. And I've gotten a lot of different kinds of questions asking me to clarify, really, some of the points that I usually bring up. And one of the points that I was asked to clarify was last week by Charlie Snogans. Now, Charlie Snogans, if you don't know, he has worked on part of Richard Meyer's Jawbreakers. He is also right now doing a book with Clint from Sweetcast, which is called Fatal. And I'll put that in the description as well. They're doing really well with this campaign, but Charlie's art is beautiful. And the thing is that Charlie jumped on a live stream that I was on, and he was doing a different one previous to that, wherein he was drawing one of his beautiful French-looking women. And he continued that in the live stream that we were both on together. And he asked me, he said, RJ, do you mind me drawing this type of picture while you're here? And I said, of course not. And I think Charlie, and maybe more than him, got the wrong impression from my last couple of videos talking about a moral standard within comics. And the thing is that the moral standard that I'm talking about is a good story. And it all comes from the idea, the really ancient idea of both hero and a story expressed best by Aristotle. And the thing I love about Aristotle and his expression, which I think is the reason why most of Western civilization continued to use this expression to base their stories upon for thousands of years, the reason I love it is because it is so nitty gritty. It is so down in the earth and getting dirty with what humanity actually is. Because the whole thing is based upon the real. It's based upon reality. And it's almost an old school Marvel type of description of a hero. And the thing is about this type of hero is that it's not the idealized kind of hero and virtue that someone like Plato tried to put in, nor the idealized idea of a hero that a lot of people try to put forth today. No, again, it's a nitty gritty kind of hero that has to face reality. Absolutely. If they wish to be a hero, they have to face reality. And the thing is that Reality is not always pleasant, and human reality certainly in itself is not always present. But we gotta look that in the face. Which is funny again, because I got a comment on one of my videos last week saying, man, you're the most black-pilled person that I'm subscribed to on YouTube. And I get this comment every once in a while, and I get people saying this to me in my real life every once in a while. They say, I'm very pessimistic. And I reply to that by saying, I'm the most positive person that I know. And this baffles them. Because really, I would say true positivity can only be found once you look that dark part of humanity in the face. You look down that path and say, I'm not going there. I'm going in a better direction than that. That is the only true kind of positivity that there is. A lot of people have this sunshine and rainbows kind of positivity, which simply is not real. It's not based in the real. It is presumption, not reality. And therefore, it's not true. That's not actual positivity. You're just fooling yourself. And so, to get back to Charlie and his comment, Charlie was saying, do I mind this? Because again, 
Charlie and other people, I'm sure, from their comments, have looked at my statements about a moral standard within comics and said, he's a bit of a prude. Now, I'm not a prude. You have to look at reality as it actually is. You have to look at the good, you have to look at the bad, and you have to look at the in-between. And part of human nature, part of reality, is that women wish to be beautiful to attract men. That's just part of reality. And, again, another part of reality is that men are attracted to attractive-looking women. It's just the way things are. And since a story, again a good story according to Aristotle, is a reflection of reality, if you wish to make it a good story, those things have to be in there. To make everyone into this neutered man-woman kind of character that you see in Marvel or sometimes in DC today is just absurd. But, and there's always a but, but it must be tempered by the rest of reality. And the rest of reality is that, as human beings, we have a certain amount of dignity. And therefore, again, with your story being a reflection of reality, you need to reflect that dignity for those characters, those female characters within your story. So, just as it is absurd for the modern Marvel to make these neuter characters, so it is also absurd, that is to say, not in accord with reality, when you have a character which is being portrayed in a hyper-sexualized way that does not respect the dignity of a human being. Now, you can have that within your story itself, with characters that don't respect others, but of course, that's vice, and that would make them a villain, and that would draw the story along. But if you're a producer of these comics, if you're a writer, if you're an artist, if you're a person who is doing the editing takes these things and says, we're going to disregard within this reflection of reality any respect for this type of person, well then no. That's not a good story, that's not a good reflection of reality, and it indeed destroys the idea of hero that is underlaid by that idea of recognizing reality as it is. And again, as I said, I got no problem with recognizing that beautiful women want to be beautiful and they should be on the page, and men are going to look at these beautiful women and be attracted to them. I got no problem with that. But it has to be tempered by the respect shown for such human beings. And you may be saying to yourself, that's a whole lot of stuff to put over top of your story. That's a whole lot of things to lay on top of, I want to tell a good story. But no, really, the simple fact of the matter is that if you take a story as it is supposed to be, as it has been for thousands of years within Western civilization, that it is a reflection of reality, that temperance that balances out these two different things within a story is simply being a good story itself. There's no overlay of some kind of moral imposition that has to go on top of this, which has to be worked out painstakingly. No, it's simply tell a good story. If it's a good story, it's a reflection of reality. Reality will reflect such things as A, the nature of the beauty of women within your story, and B, the nature of the respect that is due to them through justice within your story. Again, it's just a good story. That's all you need to do. Tell a good story. And this leads into another comment that I got from one of the other panelists on Late Night with Comics Gate a couple of weeks ago. His name is Blue Samurai. Now, Blue asked me this question. He said, RJ, you've been talking about this paragon of virtue, these heroes, for a long time now. If you're going to construct these kinds of heroes on the page, can they at some time fail? Can their foot slip? Can they sometimes descend into vice? And I would say, as I said to Blue, absolutely. This is how we can have characters that we have loved for decades and still have fresh stories coming out of them. Because again, one of the things about the reality of human nature is that we are not perfect, nor will we ever be in this life. And that's one of the things the progressives just don't understand. They don't realize that as a human being, there is no perfection here. There is no utopia that you can get to here, whether it be personally or as a society. You got to recognize that every human being is flawed and your foot is always going to slip. No matter what, your foot is going to slip and you need to persevere. You need to push on in order to stay heroic, in order to cling to virtue. You need to put a heroic effort into it. Now, how does this all relate to with putting a character down on a page? Well, the thing is that, again, with a good story, it has to be a reflection of reality. But at the same time, you have to recognize the fact that no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, what you are putting down on the page is not a human being. 
It is a character. That is the best that we can do. No matter whether that human being is someone you know, no matter whether that human being is you, it's still not a human being. It's only a character. And when I started to think about it in those terms, one quote came to my mind. I think the quote is from Romans in the Bible, and it goes like this. Glory in your sufferings, because with sufferings come endurance, with endurance comes character, and with character comes hope. And it's funny that if you look at some different translations of that passage, sometimes when you go back to the Latin instead of the Greek, instead of saying with perseverance comes character, they say from perseverance comes virtue. But if you go back to the ancient Greek, which is the oldest that we have, it is more literally translated as character. But the thing is, again, if we wish to build a character and put them down on a page, because that is the summit of what we can do within a story, we can construct them just as we construct our own character here within reality. Because again, a story is a reflection of reality. So, with suffering comes perseverance. With perseverance comes character. And this is how you build your character on the page, as well as in human life. Also, just as a quick aside, these ideas go farther back than Christianity. There are connections with these ideas, both within the Roman and the Greek storytelling as well. But again, talking about building a character, character comes from perseverance. Now this goes back to something I was talking to Blue about. The fact that, as a hero, again, your foot is always going to slip. I said to him, it reminds me of the sort of pop culture definition of what a saint is. A saint is someone who, when they get knocked down, they get back up. They always get back up. And I would say the exact same thing is true of a hero. Well, I would say that in order to be a saint first, you got to go through the hero phase. You have to be a hero first to be a saint. So the same thing is true for a hero. If you wish to be a hero, a hero always gets back up when they're knocked down. Because, of course, one of those things that can knock you down, especially knock you down hard, is vice. And that's the difference between a hero and a villain. If you're knocked down by vice, you get back up if you're a hero. If you're a villain, you get knocked down by vice, and you stay on your knees, and you serve that vice as a slave, and that is the rest of your life. And that makes you a villain. But as I said, that whole idea of perseverance goes further back into the idea of glorying in your sufferings. And that is connected to another idea which has been pervasive throughout humanity until about the last hundred years within Western civilization. It's the idea that this life is a place of suffering. Period. End of story. This place that we live in, this reality that we live in, is a place of suffering. If you look through the majority of the history of humanity, that was accepted automatically as being true. I would say if you look at the world today, except for Western civilization, that would still be accepted as true. But the funny thing is, within Western civilization, for the last hundred years or so, that idea has fallen out of favor. And a lot of people would listen to that and go, no, I don't believe that. But here's the thing. We believe that because the people who have suffered before simply did not have enough to meet their needs in some fashion. But we, as a society, for the first time in human history, are able for the majority to have luxury so that they can fulfill their needs. And not only fulfill their needs, but do more than fulfill. But that leads to the paradox of modern existence within Western civilization. And the paradox is that with too much luxury also comes suffering. If it is not limited by the virtue of temperance, they turn into suffering. And it can express itself in many different ways, but the most concise way and relevant way of looking at it is according to the following. You have Marvel pushing the idea of body positivity over and over again. Literally, they have editors saying, we need to put this in there. And I'm saying to myself, why? Why in the world would you put this in there? Not every body shape is healthy. I'm sorry, but they're not. If you have a certain body shape, it is going to lead you to disease and probably an early death. And what is that? Well, that's pain. And it's funny because as someone who has gone through these stages almost of Western civilization within my life, I can see this very clearly because there was certainly one point in my life where I was very poor. And when you're very poor, it's not hard to eat right. It's not hard to make sure that you don't go to excess with what you eat. But when you have plenty of money, 
it really has to be a standard within your life. As Plato would say, a law unto yourself that you say, no, I got to stop here. I got to have temperance. I can't eat whatever I want to eat whenever I want to eat it. I'm going to turn into someone five times my size, and that's not healthy. Nor can I just ignore exercising anytime I want. Again, that idea that Marvel is pushing of body positivity, that's going to lead you to disease and an early death. That's going to lead you to suffering. That's not going to lead you to be a happier person. Not in any way. But again, this is the contradiction of modern society that the progressive simply will not acknowledge. It's just like that line from Agent Smith in The Matrix, where he talks about humanity and how they need suffering, how they will rebel against the idea of a perfect society. That is absolutely true. Not so much rebelling against it in a willful way, but it is part of our nature to suffer because we live in a world of suffering. That is the nature of the world. Again, this is something that the progressive will not acknowledge. And this, once again, leads us back to the construction of the idea of a hero on a page. Because if you look at modern society, the thing which really needs to be focused on, if you're looking for a vice that your hero is going to fall into, it is the vice of intemperance. Because that's what we have within modern civilization. We have so much luxury, it leads to intemperance. And as I'm always saying, intemperance is one of those virtues that backs right up in a circle against right reason. The ability to see reality as it actually actually is. And if you knock over right reason, it knocks all of the other dominoes of virtue over as well. Prudence and justice and fortitude and then again back around to temperance and knocks them all over. This is something that Literature Devil talked about in his video about Superman that I'm sure emerged in some small way from our discussion of Superman when I was on his live stream. He was talking about Superman as a paragon of virtue, but he was also talking about a modern version of that, which would be Deku from My Hero Academia, and how his problem as a paragon of virtue was the fact that he was intemperate, and this is where he fell down. And again, I would say that's absolutely right. If you really want to focus on your hero's foot slipping, focus on intemperance, because people will certainly understand that today. And it also leads to the construction of a very good villain. I would say that most of the villains that you grew up with and that you know very well come from the fact that they have fallen because of intemperance. Villains like Brainiac from Superman, who puts the intelligent and the study of reason above any other factors that will allow him to see the humanity and the value of other people or other parts of reality. And certainly within Marvel, within old Marvel, you see this as well. With characters like Magneto, someone who is so focused on what he sees as rectifying a past injustice that it knocks down all the rest of the virtues within him and he simply becomes a villain. He thinks he's doing good. He he thinks he's a hero. He thinks he's doing what is right for his people. But in doing that, he's ignoring the reality of the rest of humanity, and therefore he becomes a villain. And this is the thing about intemperance. Again, it knocks down all the rest of the virtues. Or to put it another way, the way that temperance itself is actually supposed to work is not only to make sure that you don't go in excess one way or the other, but it makes sure that you don't go in an excess even within those other virtues, because it's supposed to realign the rest of the virtues with prudence, justice, fortitude. Again, they go around in a circle. If temperance backs up back onto right reason and then it reorders those other virtues so that they are in a more straight alignment with itself, this is exactly what you need for a hero. But again, always recognizing the reality that your foot can slip. Always recognizing the reality that you might indeed focus too much on one of these virtues and therefore be intemperate and therefore destroy the virtues themselves which is the tightrope that Batman himself always walks. He is trying to be just, but sometimes, like the current movie version of Batman, he descends into the madness of vengeance rather than true justice, because in thinking he's being so just, he destroys the temperance of the other virtues, and really, he descends into villainy. And this even leads back to the ideas of Augustine that I'm always talking about. Augustine, who in the 400s AD set down the idea of will that we still use today. When talking about will, he says that for a person who wishes to get rid of suffering so much that he ignores all of his feelings, the reality of his feelings themselves, in order to ensure that he never suffers, such a person doesn't actually end up in a position where they don't suffer. They simply end up in a position where they forfeit their humanity. And once again, 
This is the exact picture of a villain, someone who forfeits their humanity because they wish to forestall some kind of suffering. You have to recognize what reality is, and you have to recognize that that reality around us and as a human being is one of suffering, whether you have an excess of luxury or not. And so, to tie it all together, really, the answer to Literature Devil, the answer to Blue, the answer to Charlie, the answer to my subscribers who question whether or not this is actually possible, I would say, yes, this kind of hero is possible, but it needs to be possible by, again, looking reality in the face, understanding that your foot is always going to slip, and using that in order to straighten yourself out, in order to make virtue a private law unto yourself, wherein you say, I'm going to have to get up once again when this vice has pushed me down. I am going to have to have the perseverance. I'm going to have to have the fortitude, the courage to get back on my feet every time it knocks me down. Once again, recognizing the fact that in this reality, suffering will come. Absolutely, it will come. And that in order to construct a good hero on the page, we need to do with that hero the exact same thing that we need to do with our own lives and with our own position within reality. It is to accept that we live in a place of suffering. It is simply going to come. That we need to not ignore that suffering, nor turn a blind eye to it, nor try to make ourselves immune to it in any way. Such an act simply denies our own humanity. And so what we have left is only to glory in our suffering, because suffering brings perseverance, and perseverance builds character. So, hopefully I've given you something new to think about. If I did, hit like, hit the shield in the lower right-hand corner of your screen to subscribe, and leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about all this. And don't forget, the link is in the description for the pre-launch page for my upcoming Indiegogo campaign for my graphic novel. If you sign up, you will be informed when the project goes live. And if you sign up and then later order the book, you will receive a free pinup poster with your order. And you can only receive this free pinup poster by signing up early so that you will be informed when the project goes live. There is no other place, no other tier where you will be able to get this pinup poster. All right. I'll see you later. Bye.